All right. Hey, my friend, and welcome to this episode where we're going to talk about how OCD develops in someone's life or, you know, essentially what causes OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder to develop. And, um, you know, what I, what I want to talk about first is, is that, you know, it's important to understand that OCD can onset at different points of people's lives. In fact, I have a, um, a whole nother episode on that. And, you know, we can link it down in the notes below about when it develops. But generally speaking, um, OCD develops kind of in late, you know, um, or early or late adolescence. So you're talking in that 10 to 12 range or that uh, like kind of 16 to 20 range. But there are cases in which it can onset in adulthood and, and, you know, postpartum OCD and things like that. And again, when we're talking about OCD, what we're talking about is... um, obsessive compulsive disorder. So there's that four main components that that we're looking for, right? So you have the obsession, right? Which is the intrusive thought or that, you know, the thought that produces doubt and uncertainty and anxiety, right? And so you, that's the, the first part is the thought. Second part is that anxiety or that uncertainty. And then you have the compulsion that someone does in order to relieve the anxiety, right? So the fourth part is that relief. And what we what we're talking about in this particular episode is, well, how does that that cycle develop, right? And what causes that cycle to develop in a person's life? And, you know, there, there are obviously several factors at play here, right? So it's not like this one thing happens that, um, that causes this to happen in a person's life because, you know, there is evidence to suggest that there could be a genetic component. And, you know, in, in my experience and not only with OCD, but also working with many people, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, because if you have OCD, that means guaranteed that your parents did, right? And it's, in in my opinion, you're not born with OCD, right? So it's not this is genetic only disorder, right? There's environmental triggers that then surface, you know, your your propensity to to engage in this in in, in these overreactions, right? So you have a combination of a genetic component and then environmental factors. So we want to talk about that obviously first, right? Is that we need to understand there's this combination at play here. Now I don't know exactly what the percentages are, and I'm sure they're different for for each and every person. But when we're talking about what causes OCD to develop, now that we understand those two factors, what what we need to understand is that OCD is is developed right? That loop that people get ca- that get caught in, right? Based on an initial overreaction to some, to whatever that, that feared stressor is or that feared trigger. And then when they do a compulsion to relieve that stress, it solidifies into a loop, right? So for instance, like if someone is afraid of um, contamination, right? You know, which is a very common form of OCD, you know, they're, they're going to touch something, right? Let's say a specific object. And then they have a false appraisal of that threat, right? So they, they falsely, you know, uh, again, um, miscalculate the threat they're, they're in, in which causes an overreaction in the body, right? The stress response fires off, they go into fight or flight mode, and then they do a behavior to neutralize the threat, right? Well, doing that behavior then solidifies the idea that that thought was dangerous. So then the next time they experience that thought, they have that same reaction again, and then they do the compulsion again, and they build a tolerance to the compulsions. So it just grows and grows and grows like this just weed, right? And that's why you'll see OCD onset quite suddenly in people's lives, right? So in the in the example of contamination, like if someone touches the doorknob and their mind falsely appraises the idea that that doorknob is dangerous, and they have a reaction to it emotionally, well, then they're going to do something like wash their hands, which is the compulsion that then causes relief. And then the next time they touch the doorknob, they're going to have, again, that large emotional reaction and then do the compulsion again. And it just grows and grows and grows. So what we need to understand about what causes OCD, well, there could be a genetic predisposition to, let's say, having an overreaction to something, right? Or even having I don't know, kind of a, an active mind, right? An overactive mind or, you know, a, and, and, and again, it could be learned as well, right? You know, if your parent is always like, don't touch that, that's dirty, right? You know, I mean, like that stuff early on in childhood, you know, could obviously create that propensity to have those kind of thoughts later in life. And then when you have that overreaction, 
and then you engage in a compulsion to relieve that reaction, that's what causes that that to solidify as a loop, right? So when you have that thought, and again, this could be, be thoughts on anything because um, OCD can latch on to all sorts of things. It could get, you know, a religious theme, right? People could have intrusive thoughts that are harmful towards others or towards themselves. They could also have intrusive thoughts that are, you know, sexual. And, and then you can also go into like hit and run OCD where people are, um, you know, worried that they're going to accidentally hurt someone with their car and you can go into contamination, right? You know, uh, catastrophe events, fears of bad things happening. I mean, all sorts of things can happen, right? And, um, and again, I, I have some links down in the notes where you can look at different subtypes of OCD if you want to, but really what causes that to solidify as a loop, right? And this is the important part is those four components. So you have the the intrusive thought or the obsessive thought or the, 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 the thought that's essentially rooted in doubt, right? Because OCD um, was coined by the French as the, the doubting disorder, right? So that thought that produces doubt. And then you have the overreaction. And, and that right there is really where the catalyst of it, right? Because a lot of people have these same kind of thoughts that people with OCD have. They just don't have that overreaction. And then when you do a compulsion to neutralize the overreaction and get that relief, then the thought happens again, then the overreaction happens again, and then you have to do the compulsion again. And that's what builds it into that loop, right? So when, when we're talking about what causes it, yes, there's an aspect of genes and environment. Sure. Like we, we know that. Um, I don't know the percentage and I'm sure it's different for each one, but really the intrusive thought and the thoughts, usually most people experience those kind of thoughts. So that false appraisal of threat and that overreaction from the stress response, um, you know, that that's a unique component to OCD. And then when we engage in a compulsion to neutralize it, that's really what solidifies it into the loop. So, you know, this um, in this episode, I just wanted to talk about that one idea um, because as we move on in this series, we're going to talk about um, you know, different components of the, of the OCD loop. And again, not only what causes it, but then what you can start doing to really break yourself out of that loop. So, um, you know, if you found this helpful, we always appreciate if you'd like and subscribe and follow us and share it with your friends as well on social. And, uh, if you, if you do struggle with OCD, there's also some resources down in the notes as well. Um, you have free guides and assessments, um, to help you on our, on our website at restoredminds.com. So thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, listen to this episode and I will see you guys soon. Take care.